In 1886, a clash of police, the army and civilians would result in 26 people being killed. The mastermind behind these riots, an eel. Now before we get right into it, you're probably wondering who I am and where Plainly Difficult is. Well, my name is Cukeser and I run a video series called Tales from the Bottle, where I look at all sorts of bizarre events throughout history, similar to this channel. In fact, Plainly is over on my channel right now, narrating a story about beards. So you get two videos for the price of one. But before you head over there, let's take a look at the Great Eel Riots of 1886. Eel pulling is a sport where the slippery eel is tied to a post or a rope suspended above the players of the game who have to pull the eel down as they travel underneath. It's very similar to goose pulling where a greased up goose is similarly suspended and horse riders must pelt past trying to rip the head off the goose. Christ almighty. Nowadays everyone's obsessed with Fortnite and PUBG but back in the day you either played goose or you played eel and you probably never shut the fuck up about it back then either. In July 1886, a crowd of people had gathered in Lindengracht, Amsterdam to play some eel pulling. Today Lindengracht is covered in concrete for parking space, but back then it was home to a canal. A rope was tied to houses on either side of the canal and a live eel was hung in the middle. Players passing underneath in small boats would try to pull the eel down for a monetary reward, with most players ending up in the water. The plot twist here is that eel pulling was seen as cruel and was illegal. Illegal. Eel. Eagle. The police would soon become involved in a bloody skirmish with spectators, which begs the question, who would win in a fight? 26 men or one slippy boy? Several police officers descended on the scene to put a stop to the merriment, as police are wont to do. They entered one of the houses from which the rope was tied and cut it down. Lindengracht was a very working class area and the people there living in poverty did not take kindly to the police ending their fun. As soon as the police exited the house and stepped foot on the streets, they were attacked. Civilians threw rocks and bricks and soon they were joined by some nearby socialist protesters and the scuffle escalated. Within a few hours, there was a full-blown riot. This riot lasted several days, coming to a head when rioters broke into the police station. It was at this point the army was called in to restore peace and order. Mm, sorry, I actually have a typo here. I'll do that again. It was at this point the army was called in to open fire at the protesters and slaughter them mercilessly. 26 people were killed with about 100 more wounded and 2,000 were arrested. Now I know what you're wondering, what happened to our slimy friend, the eel? Well apparently he survived, but not as a free man. Well, I suppose obviously not as a free man. He's not a man to begin with, a, uh, a free eel. No, the eel was somehow captured and was later sold in an auction in 1913. Now, I, I thought that was a pretty long time after the riots, so I looked up the lifespan of an eel, and apparently a European eel can live up to 85 years. Now, no one knows what actually happened to the eel after the auction, he kind of disappeared, but that means he could have potentially been alive up to 1971. <laughs> Amazing. And hey, don't forget, you have another plainly difficult video for you waiting over on my channel right now. So go check that out. And while you're over there, you can check out some of my other videos. It's a similar style of content. So if you like plainly, I know you're going to like my stuff too. I'd also like to thank plainly difficult for collaborating with me as well as you guys, his audience for having me. And with that, I'm going to get gone. Cukeser out. Thank you.